Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Sorry for the long hiatus. Uh, got lots going on, so just didn't get around to making uh, this next video. So what we're going to be going over today is how to actually back flush uh, your holding tanks on an RV. So for those who don't know, I actually am full time in an RV, uh, wrapping up my last few years on where I'm at right now. I just haven't had good weather out here, I'm located out in, in Washington State. So this weekend we finally got some good weather. So I'm going to go through everything that I've seen, researched, and uh, putting together this kit on how to flush out the uh, the holding tanks on the RV. So stay tuned. We're going to get into the steps that we have to do. All right. So we're going to go into the parts that we're going to need to do this task. So for starters, we got uh, a 90 degree elbow that we ordered or picked up at a local RV store. Um, what we're going to have to do is this gets attached to the RV and you'll see once more, but basically we're going to have to drill a hole in the top of this kind of like right here on the, the, the elbow itself on the back side, so we can actually feed the hose through it. So what we have here is the, the kit that I ordered off of Amazon and it's got a bunch of different nozzles, tips and whatnot for it. But basically what we're going to be looking to do is our hose that we have here, right here. So the largest fitting on the end of it is what we're going to have to have the, the hole in our elbow for so this can pass through it. And you'll see what I'm talking about once we uh, get everything put together and um, start flushing out the tanks. All right, guys, so what we're going to be end up doing here first, we're going to be putting our sprayer nozzle that we have um, on the end of our hose. So what I always like to do is before we get started, uh, put some, some, some Teflon tape on the threads just to make sure that we have a nice tight seal and everything is, uh, is not leaking. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to maximize pressure at the end of this nozzle um, to break up anything that's inside of the, um, the holding tank so it can get flushed out and passed, passed uh, through and drained out. So once you got your Teflon tape on there, make sure you don't have anything kind of impeding your, your orifice of the opening. Um, and then what you do is you're just going to thread on your nozzle. Now this is kind of a button style, they call it. Now it pressurizes out the tip and then it has on this little lip, I don't know if you can see it, how it's got the little mushroom on the tip. And it's got jets on the backside under here that spray backwards. So as you're feeding your hose up through, and if it passes or misses anything that's in there, that water pressuring backwards will actually provide the pressure that you need to uh, break loose anything and get it flushed out. <clears throat> take some wrenches. I think this was a 17 millimeter. And then just tighten that down so it's nice and snug. So you have a nice uh, watertight connection. Now for this particular for this particular uh, hose. It has the actually attachments for different types of uh, pressure washers. So you actually want to use that to build more pressure. Uh, so the other end of it will actually attach to the pressure washer. And I'll show you that here in a second. All right, guys. So after a quick little thought process, I figured I can just control the on and off of the water pressure with the uh, on off switch of the pressure washer. So I just went ahead just so I didn't have so much extra hose the hose from the pressure washer, the nozzle, then the 500 foot or however many length the hose that this package came from from Amazon. I just decided to put the end that goes in threads directly on where the pressure washer's high, high pressure side comes. So I'll just thread that on there so I don't even have to worry about it. That way, all I have to do is actually control the on off of the water pressure with the button, the on off switch of the pressure washer itself. So just kind of like help clean the area up. So the next step that we have to do is determine how big our, our, our nozzle is because this is what we're going to base the size of our hole on. You want it a little bit bigger just so it feeds in and out easier, but you don't want the hole so big that when all of your, your wastewater is, that's bitten flushed out starts splashing out of the hole. And we'll hold a rag over it once we, once we get to that point, but I just want to take a rough guess uh, uh, or take a rough measurement on the size that we're looking at. 
So roughly we're looking at three quarters of an inch at the widest part of this nozzle. So that's probably the size that we're gonna go with and then we'll just kind of ream it in and out a little bit just to kind of open up the hole a little bit so the hose and the nozzle can feed in freely easier. All right guys, so we got our fitting here now and we know that our, bar our barbed side uh, for our four lugs is the part that attaches to the RV. So what we're going to be doing is actually at an angle, kind of drilling a hole right here is where I want, I want to stay above. So any water that's flushing out, it can flow freely down there. I don't want to go right in here. So water that comes out is splashing right out. I want to stay up above it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pile it. So I have my first hole right where I want it. Now there's already a mold line on here and I think that'll work perfectly. So that's where we're going to go with it. And we'll just step step it up um, as we go until we get to that three quarter inch size that we need. So the next one we'll go to is a three eighth bit. We'll throw that in the drill. And just kind of make the hole a little bit bigger, but kind of keeping it at an angle as well. Clean up our mess. And then what we'll probably end up doing is just going straight to our uh, three quarter inch bit and getting that final opening made. Actually, maybe we'll go with a nine sixteenths and then we'll go to three quarter inch. So had to go to a different drill set to get to that next, these next steps up. And then we'll just kind of like open it up a little bit more. There we're at nine sixteenths. And our final step will be our three quarter inch bit. Okay. We'll clean that up. I got a deburring tool um, to clean up the edges around there but just to get this shavings out of the way then what we'll do is we'll grab our hose grab our elbow and voila right there we've got our hose it'll feed up inside um, and you'll see more once we uh once we get into flushing it but pretty much there's all your prep work for all your equipment that you're going to need to use um, so we, next time I see you, we'll, we'll start setting up the hoses and getting all the water run. All right, guys. So we got our pressure washer out here. It's just a small little Ryobi that I picked up for Home Depot. Um, we got our hose set up. You can see with not having the nozzle, the water pressure is going constantly. So we just kind of got it tucked in there. But what I do have here is on the back side where my hose attaches, I actually have a shut off so I can actually turn off the water to my hose. So this is the elbow that we were talking about doing our prep work. <clears throat> so I actually have some valves here that I can actually shut off everything. So that way, when I get ready to take that hose off and put that elbow on right here, I have nothing else coming back out of it. So we'll go ahead and, uh, We'll get that attached and then I got some rubber gloves that I wear when I do this type of stuff too so we'll get that attached and then we'll start feeding that hose in there and see what we can't uh, flush out so we are getting some sludge coming out guys um, just want to feed the hose back in and out kind of rinsing everything out and what you want to do is, like I say, you want to make sure you're wearing gloves on both hands, Chad, when you're doing this, because you're going to feed the hose out. Like I say, when you can see the amount of pressure that I got boiling around in that bulb. You know, I don't have the, the, uh, the rag over it, but we're feeding it. We got to be up into the tank pretty close by now. 
So we'll just kind of rotate the hose around so that way it sprays in all different directions up inside the tank. Getting a nice clean flush coming out. Rinsing everything else. Nice. And everything that I've read online, it says you want to kind of do this um, maybe once a year, or not once a year, but like once every five years or so. Um, I went ahead and bought the, the equipment just so I had it. Um, so I could do this myself. Uh, everything that I read, uh, the, the couple of videos that I've seen that people had done it, they, they charged them like three, four hundred dollars to do their whole RV. So I figured for the price, of, you know, I already got the pressure washer, I already got everything. So might as well just go ahead and uh, get the equipment to kind of do it myself. This tank here, <clears throat> the back tank, typically doesn't have, you know, it always the the, the gauge, because there are gauges, the gauge always showed that this one was never, uh, never had any issues. Every time I had dumped and drained the tanks, it was, it showed that the tank was empty, but I'm getting some stuff out of it, so it's kind of like feeding it and flushing it and feeding it and flushing it, rotating it. So like I said, that's pretty much what you, you know, what you see is what you get, like, for what it does. It, it's doing a pretty decent job. And the little pressure washer I got, that, that's the one I have for the RV. So it's small, compact, doesn't take up a lot of room. And it's still got pretty good power. It's got 1,800 PSI, so it, it does a pretty solid job for what I needed to do here on the RV. Just kind of let that set up in there and kind of like just flush. Yeah, there we go. So I didn't show video of the actual work being done. A um, little bit of pause between when I got into it and uh, when I finished. I had to take a shower afterwards, washing some clothes. But as you can see, it's pretty simple to uh, acquire the materials that you need. And conduct and flush your own holding tanks on your RV. Um, like I say, everything that I used, I bought at either Home Depot. I got it off of Amazon, and I probably I already had the pressure washer. I think I probably have a hundred dollars into the material for the for the tube with the nozzles, the sprayers, and everything else. Everything went pretty smooth. It was just, uh, for the lack of a better term, messy. Uh, but it it. Now all the gauges, because there are gauges in the tanks that show where they're at, and all the gauges are showing that everything is empty. So uh, I would say it's pretty successful. I think next time with having where the, the main dump tank uh, ejection port is located, it's right under where my kitchen slide is at. So I think the next time I do something like this, I'll probably use uh, once I'm done and I'm living in Texas uh, full time with with Michelle, and then go through it and do it again. Do a good thorough cleaning. It was a little difficult um, to differentiate between where gray tank one, gray tank two, and the the main black tank. Uh, opening one port, closing the other two, and then opening another one, closing the other one, and so on and so forth. So it just uh, there was a lot more labor intensive, especially crawling out from under the. Uh, the slide out, it just made it, it was an awkward position. So I think next time when I do it, it um, I'll have all the slides in and it'll, it'll go much smoother. So um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Other than that, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe the video. Uh, help, help get my content out there, uh, pass in some knowledge and create uh, more traffic for myself inside of YouTube's, al YouTube's algorithm. So Next time, uh, until next time, guys, uh, just want to say God bless.